Good evening, and welcome to Maundy Thursday Worship at Trinity. We're glad that you're here tonight to participate in this service when we remember the new command that Jesus gave to his disciples, that they should love one another. A couple of notes about tonight's service. We will not be receiving an offering during the service, but we want to thank you for your generous contributions to the offering. Some of you have dropped them off at the office or sent them in the mail. Others have gone to our webpage at trinitylife.org backslash give and have continued to support our mission of connecting people to Christ. One other note about tonight's service, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper as part of the service tonight, and so you can participate at home in the Lord's Supper. We invite you to have bread and either red wine or grape juice ready uh, so you can receive the supper in your home. Tonight's service will end in silence, and the service will really continue tomorrow night, Good Friday, at 6 o'clock p.m., uh, we'll be having a tenebrae service, which is a service that gets, uh, leads toward increasing darkness. And if you'd like to participate in that darkness side of the service, we'd invite you to have seven candles ready that you can extinguish along with us as we uh, remember the seven words of Jesus from the cross. We don't want to jump ahead too quickly, but Easter Sunday, we'll celebrate the resurrection of Jesus this week Sunday. That service will premiere at 9 o'clock a.m., and we invite you to share the word about the service with your one, with your friends, with your neighbors, as we uh, together celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In John 13, Jesus said to his disciples, A new command I give you, that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, so shall you love one another. On this night, we remember that Jesus was betrayed into the hands of sinful people. On this night, we remember that Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room. On this night, we remember that Jesus, the King of heaven, took the nature of a servant and washed his disciples' feet. On this night, we remember that Jesus began the Lord's Supper and that when we remember his death, uh, we are able to have the hope of all that is to come as we celebrate life in him. Let us worship God and let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment on our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue in the service tonight, we invite you to recite together the words of the Apostles' Creed, and they'll be shown on your screens for you to participate. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
On Ash Wednesday, we worshiped together as the people of God. And as part of our worship, people came forward and received a cross of ashes on their forehead with the words, remember you are dust and to dust shall return. In that service, we began a journey of Lent where we look inside, we recognize who we are and the disparity between our lives and the gracious love of God. During the 40 days of Lent, we do not hear a word of forgiveness, but we examine and continue to explore our own sinfulness, looking forward to that day when we hear God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's mercy. Monday, Thursday, we come together and we hear that word of absolution, the entire forgiveness of all our sins. As we begin this process of confessing once again, and hearing that word of forgiveness, join me. We recall from Romans 5, 8, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you commanded. Hear us as we take a moment of silence and confess to you. In your mercy, O God, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. In response to the individual ashes that were placed on foreheads on Ash Wednesday, we also respond with an individual absolution. As you hear these words, I pray that you take them to heart and receive them as the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In homes where there are multiple people worshiping, I encourage an adult in the room to share these words with others and for others to share these words with the adult leader in the room. As we have confessed our sins, as we have shared the brokenness of our lives, we come to God seeking that word of grace. Hear that word now. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Please share that generously, lavishly with one another. Now hear these words of absolution for the whole people of God. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we enter into your word tonight, as we enter into this Monday, Thursday service, we pray, Lord, that you would guide us into your word, that you would give us insight, wisdom, and that, Lord, you would meet us here and wherever we are gathered with your Holy Spirit and your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome. Today begins a movement in Holy Week. We started with Palm Sunday on Sunday, where we shouted out hope, crying out in hope that as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, we shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, Jesus. And we read in Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, and the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Tonight we experience this movement from joy and hope. This loud proclaiming of Hosanna. This celebration on Palm Sunday. And we move now into something different. We move into a solemn lament in this Monday Thursday. From Hosanna that we cried on Sunday to the movement of shouts of crucify him. Tonight is known as Monday Thursday. Monday is another word for mandate. And, and what we are experiencing in Monday Thursday, what we, what we read and, and express on Monday Thursday is, is this mandate that Jesus gave his disciples as he washed their feet and he called them to love and serve one another, to love and serve their neighbors. We read about this in John 13, verse 14, which says, if then your Lord and master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. We also, on Monday, Thursday, we celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper. Tonight's message is going to focus predominantly towards the words that are heard at the Last Supper. It's important, though, that as we approach this, that we know and understand what was going on as Jesus gathered with his disciples on that evening. This was for, they were gathering for the Passover festival. They were going to participate together in the Passover meal. And everyone in Jerusalem would have been doing similar at this point as well and participating in a Passover meal and festival. The disciples would have seen this in a more festive and celebratory type of gathering where, where this festival of Passover comes together, where we move also from this shout of Hosanna on Palm Sunday and the disciples continue into that kind of similar aspect of those shouts of Hosanna Sunday into Thursday 
where the disciples gather to celebrate still. They're coming to celebrate this Passover meal to remember that God had freed their people from slavery in Egypt. The disciples didn't know or understand at the time the weight of the moment they were in. The moment of the weight and experience they were having that night with Jesus. Because everything was about to change. In a few short hours, everything did change. Jesus was arrested, put on trial, and killed. This is all shortly after Jesus had gathered with his disciples. So the disciples entered into this evening with celebration in mind at this Passover meal. Jesus washed their feet in servitude and then implemented the Lord's Supper. Paul, in 1 Corinthians, recalls what was passed down to him on that night about what happened at the Lord's Supper. So we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I would encourage you, if you have a Bible or a Bible app at home, that you would turn and join with me. We're going to read uh, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. This is Paul writing. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this 1 Corinthians verse that we read, Paul giving us the words of our Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed. It starts with those words, on the night in which he was betrayed. And that is the key focus that we're going to have tonight, is that word betrayed. I want you to think, have you ever been betrayed? What did that feel like? Was it someone that was close to you? And what was your response to their betrayal? The natural response is anger, distrust. It's also to cut those people out of your life because of the experience you had because they betrayed you. So we enter into this hearing we hear on the night he was betrayed. And I think our initial assumption when we hear that is that we're talking about one person. That we're talking about Judas on the night that Judas betrayed Jesus. But what about Peter? What about the other disciples? What about the crowds? What about you? What about me? I want to look towards a verse in Mark chapter 14, verse 31. This is Peter responding to Jesus after Jesus has told him that he is about to deny him three times. And, and Peter's response back to Jesus is Mark 14, 31. And this is him saying, but Peter said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. That all is talking about the other disciples in agreement with Peter saying, we would never deny you. In fact, we would rather die with you than deny you. Just a few verses later, 19 verses later, we see Jesus being arrested. And in Mark 14, verse 50, 19 verses later, we see a major change. Jesus is arrested and the disciples' response, what it says in 50, is, and they, and they, the disciples, all left him and fled, including Peter. Hmm. Not only did they flee, and in fact, the next verse that says that one of those disciples fled in such an erratic way, and in the midst of all of the chaos and, and the fear that he experienced, he ran so quickly away that he lost his clothing trying to flee. But not just his disciples. 
It's easy to point to, to those verses and understand that the, the, the disciples fled him, that they actually abandoned him, that they betrayed him. But not just as disciples. Remember, Palm Sunday, shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna. Now on the, that night, on that day, on Thursday and Friday, we see a shift that solemn lament from celebration to lament as we see the crowd shift from Hosanna to crucify him. We read in Luke chapter 23, and again, I'd encourage you if you have a Bible or a Bible app to open with me to Luke chapter 23. We're going to read from verses 18 to 25. It says, But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man. Release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then released and release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. It's a reading from Luke chapter 23. The crowd on Palm Sunday shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now they shout, crucify him. We, like the crowd, we shout Hosanna, but only to a Jesus that conforms to our agenda, to our preferences, that agrees with me in everything. I shout Hosanna, save me in the way I want to be saved. Just like the crowd, we shout Hosanna for that Jesus, but not the Jesus we find in Scripture. Instead, like the crowd, we turn and we shout, crucify him. He doesn't meet my agenda. He doesn't meet the need that I want met right now. We shout, crucify him. We call out, give us Barabbas. We, like Peter, like Judas, like the other disciples, and like the crowd, betray the Son of God. We are all betrayers. We are the ones who sent Jesus to the cross. Mel Gibson, the director of The Passion of the Christ, appeared in one scene in that movie. You wouldn't have seen his face, you would have saw his hand holding a hammer and nailing Jesus' hands in the movie to the cross. He said this about that scene. It was a symbolic of the fact that he holds himself accountable that Mel Gibson holds himself accountable first and foremost for Christ's death. That it's his sin, that it's his betrayal that put him, Jesus, on the cross. In a similar way, one of the songs, one of the old hymns called Ah Holy Jesus, lyrics reflect on this exact same concept. We, we see this, the, the lyrics from Ah Holy Jesus Alas, my treason, I it was denied thee, I crucified thee. My treason, I denied thee, I crucified thee. Yet what we see and what we experience in the Lord's Supper on that Monday, Thursday, Jesus knowingly gives his betrayers, the disciples, his friends, yet betrayers, he offers them, he gives them, he speaks words of forgiveness. He says, this is for you. Betrayer, hear these words. For you, I forgive your sins. The disciples, myself, you, we are all betrayers of Christ. Yet Christ comes to us in the Lord's Supper and on the cross. And he offers his body up, his blood. And Christ's body 
and blood is broken and shed for you. That forgiveness is for you. Tonight, when we partake in Holy Communion, we hear the words from Jesus as we participate in the Lord's Supper. You who betrayed me, you are forgiven. Christ's body, Christ's blood, broken for you and shed for you. You are forgiven. Amen. Father, we pray that as we consider the words from your scripture, the words from your very mouth, the words spoken by Jesus over his disciples who betrayed him, yet he forgave them. Lord, we lean into that fact that we, though we are betrayers, though we put you on the cross, though we turn from Hosanna to crucify with just a few simple days, Lord, we seek your forgiveness that you say is for us. We live in that promise that the forgiveness of sins is for each of us. And we thank you for your death on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we come together on Maundy Thursday and we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, which Jesus instituted this night from the upper room. As we come together for communion tonight, we are reminded that every one of us have betrayed Jesus by living life on our terms and in our way and not following the will of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and living the best life that he intends for us each and every day. As we come to communion today, we recognize that we are in some unusual circumstances. And so we are going to do communion in an unusual way 
by giving and receiving communion online. I ask that you have available some wine uh, or grape juice and some bread, uh, as normal and plain a bread as possible. And I will give instructions throughout the sacrament for you to give and receive communion together. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Heavenly and gracious God, thank you for this gift of Holy Communion. Thank you for the promise that through our sin comes the power of your forgiving grace, that in the bread and the wine we receive your forgiveness, reconciliation, restoration with you. Lord, forgive us our sins and cleanse us that we may be brought near to you through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are worshiping as an individual today, I will, in essence, be giving you communion, which you will then receive. And if you are worshiping with a group of people, your family or others, I would encourage one adult in the group to be a leader and distribute communion to those who are present. If there are children who are under the age of communion, we would encourage you to give them a blessing saying the blessings of Christ poured out for you as you place your hand on their head. And as you receive this sacrament, please know that we welcome all who believe that Jesus Christ is present for the forgiveness of sin or receive communion in their home congregation. As we join together first in this gift of bread, the body of Christ is given for you. As you dip the wafer or the bread into the wine, hear these words, the blood of Christ is shed for you. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his living grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the love poured out for us by Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that we would be strengthened by this gift, that we would be renewed, that we would be refreshed, that we would serve one another in your name, that we would truly love one another as you have loved us. In your name we pray, amen.
Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He, the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery, He the perfect Son of Man, in His name. trace nor stain of sin. See the true and better Adam come to save the help out man. Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who seek me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of lions. 
Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it.